Hey folks, uh, today we're going to have a look at one of the undocumented features that the Verpal joystick has. Now if we pull up the manual, you can see there's more stuff coming soon. Uh, I've covered the shift modifier, gone through how to set up the mode dial, and explained how the throttle double axis lock works. And now we're going to look at the axis zoom. So, without further ado, let's bring up the software. So, uh, Axis zoom could operate in either of these, the throttle or the stick, but I'm going to configure it on the stick because it's probably going to be more useful and you'll see that demonstrated shortly. So, first thing, go to our axis tab and I'm going to enable this for both axes 1 and 2, which is the X and the Y. So just double click here, anywhere on that line. And there's our little boolean to switch it on. So I'm going to click there, activate it, click save. And then I'm going to do the same for the X. And then save. So that's the basic first part done. That's basically saying, look, I want to use this functionality. I don't want to use it on the X and the Y axes. I don't want to use it on my Verbal Warbird. So that's the first thing done. The next thing we have to do is go and actually pick a button to assign against it. And that's what this controller here is. This basically is where you'd enter whatever button you're going to use to do this function. So let's go find ourselves a button. So go to the button tab. Now the easiest one I can think of using for this is trusty old button 4. That's a little pinky switch. So Here's where it gets interesting. This is where you can make you, ha you have to make a kind of decision on this, which is which way you think is going to be the least pain in the arse for you to use. We want to use this button, physical button four, to do something. We're going to bind it to do our axis zoom, so it's going to be used by the joystick itself to do something. So method one is that we make sure whatever f program like uh, DCS or XPlane or whatever that we do not bind. The joystick, that's the logical button that Windows sees, button 18, do anything. Because if we press it to do this axis zoom function and it's bound to do something else, you're going to get two things happening at once. That's probably undesired. So method one is just make sure you don't bind button 18 to anything within your uh, within your simulator, game, program, whatever the hell you're going to use. Option two which requires a bit more uh, messing around, but it means you, you won't cock something up, is we unbind this. So, if we were to want to unbind it, because that's what I'm going to do in this demonstration, is so I'm going to double click on this, go clear, and then save. Okay, so button four is not bound to any logical button, so when it's pressed, nothing's going to get sent up the windows. Now, the caveat is this, I discovered this last week, I don't know if it's Windows or the VPC software, but it does not like gaps. Uh, if I leave it as is, I'm going to lose actually two buttons. So what I need to do is take button, physical button three, and move it up one, which is what I'm going to do here. Double click on this. I'm going to punch in button three and then save. Uh, we don't want it to do two things, so we'll just double click on this. Clear, save. So we've basically removed button four from sending any logical buttons up to Windows. Now, uh, that means that we don't need to worry about unbinding particular buttons in uh, whatever program we're going to use. This is the way I would personally do this myself. So, okay. That's the, uh, the first sort of part set up. And what I'll do here is I'll set button 4 to be our action button, which basically means when I press button 4 and hold it, I want to activate this feature. So we'll just save that back. I'll just set this to 1. For demonstration purposes and save this back to the actual joystick. Okay, so we've got the basic setup. We've set the two flags here on both these axes, the X and the Y, to enable this axis zoom function. We've set the action button to be 4, and we've unbound it from anything else, and we've set up a coefficient division of 1. 
I'll just show you what that actually means in uh, physical movement. So I've selected my warbird. I have um, I'm monitoring the little graph there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the stick all the way forward. Let's do zero back to 50% and then back to 100 and then let it go back to the center. So that's me moving the stick as normal and it deflects as it normally would. Now I'm going to do the same thing again with the uh, zoom button press, number four, a little pinky switch. And back to the center and it makes bugger all difference. Why does it make bugger all difference? Because the coefficient we've used is one. It's not going to change. That's a one to one ratio right now. So let's up this to two and then save it back and see what it does. All right, our tester again, and do the same procedure again. Push the stick all the way forward, all the way back. That's without the button depressed. And then do the same now with the button depressed. And back to the center. And you'll notice what it's basically done is it's reduced the amount of um, travel that's being sent, the, the, the amount of deflection that's being sent into windows. So when I hold the button, it makes the joystick more precise. So I'm still pushing this 100% physically um, forward and then all the way back. I'm doing the same things identically, but you can see the actual deflection that sent the windows has been divided by two. And that's basically what this feature lets you do. So for example, if you were trying to do some air to air flying and you wanted to be more precise temporarily, then what you could do is press and hold the button, move the stick around. Now, this is very important to note. You need to do this kind of from the center out. Okay, so if I were to do it the other way around, so I'm gonna pull the stick, or sorry, I'll push the stick all the way forward. So that's, you know, down to zero. And then I'm gonna press and hold the button. Holding the button, I move the joystick back to center, and you notice it's not centered. Now if I release the button, it'll snap immediately to center, so 50%. Now that's a very, very fast deflection. And if you were flying something that could very be very, very bad for uh, you and or whoever's flying close to you. And it goes the same the other way around. If I were to, let's pull it back all the way. Press the button. Move the stick to the center, then release. It's the exact same thing. That is a problem. And the other one would be um, if I was doing this, for example. So I've pulled it back and now we're approximately 50% of deflection. or well, 75% really if you look at it that way. If I take my finger off the button, whoosh, we instantly go to 100%. So you have to kind of be aware of that, that if you press this button and release it out of out of center, should I say, then you're going to have some serious problems. The blue here is just left to right movement because I've enabled this for both axes. So you can see it's still deflecting at half of what it should do. So that's that's how it basically operates. And that's what to be aware of if you're going to use this functionality. That you could, if you suddenly snap your finger off the button, uh, make things very bad for yourself. I'll switch this to three here. I wouldn't really use any more than three because it's going to divide it even further. And show the joy tester. So same as before, just move it without the button and then do the same thing with the button. And you can see it's dropped it a whole lot further. Okay, temporarily took my button off for a split second there. So yeah, I mean, change that number there. Larger it gets, the smaller the deflection is going to actually be sent to windows, and the more precise your movements will be when you're actually flying. And that's the basics of how you set this up.